All right. Uh, welcome back. Harmless Dave here talking about real music or somewhat real music in real time for a few real people out there just like you and just like me. First things first, big shout out to JB. All right, JB, who is basically like an anonymous donor, and uh, he is now really helping this channel a lot. So uh, kudos to JB. Thank you. Uh, your support is much appreciated and way above and beyond. We're talking about wealthy donor-like contributions to this, even though I have folks out there telling me to stop it. Stop talking about how you want people to support your channel. Just cut it out. All right. Like, just tell half of YouTube to do that too, right? Um, YouTube revenue isn't what it used to be. And so, like a lot of people, I ask folks if they'd like to contribute, uh, they can do that via YouTube memberships and also um, through Patreon. So I appreciate that. Uh, JB has found another avenue to help me out. So uh, thank you to him. Also, uh, before I start talking about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which again is always so much fun on this channel. I'm just loving the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame the last five or six years. When are they going to change the name of the institution? That's the first question that needs to be asked. Because again, their name is biased. They're, they're saying it's rock and roll. And yet they keep nominating things that aren't rock and roll. So we'll cover that. Um, before I get there, uh, if you like the band Kansas, by the way, Kansas has never been nominated uh, for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which is outrageous. Here is Jerome Mazza and his album Outlaw Son. Uh, Jerome really should be in the band Kansas. He is that great. Uh, his vocals are right in line with um, the original Kansas tenor. Um, just amazing. Talking about Steve Walsh, obviously, who was one of the best singers ever. Uh, and Jerome is right there. He's right in that hemisphere okay stratosphere i don't know uh pick a word with sphere in it so um the hall of fame <clears throat> they have decided to put out their list for uh their 2024 nominees uh ozzy osbourne peter frampton yes and yes and then you've got oasis <laughs> i i don't i don't get oasis were like big for how many years maybe three I don't know. The people who like that band really like them. And the late Sinead O'Connor. Now, listen, um, I like Sinead O'Connor, um, but her body of work um, and the way, obviously, she passed away was tragic. But her body of work doesn't rise to the level of rock and roll Hall of Fame status. All right. She's she's good, but. Again, um, why not Nicolette Larson then? You know, I mean, there are singers out there. Why not Patti Smythe, for crying out loud? I mean, Patti Smythe is one of the greatest female singers of all time. I know, because um, back in the day, Sinead O'Connor was kind of a radical. And uh, that gets the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame all hot and bothered with love for uh, the said artist here, in this case, it's Sinead O'Connor. Now, again, Sinead has a great voice, and, um, you know, I've praised her work, uh, but I just don't think she's got the catalog, the resume, to uh, make it into the Hall of Fame. She lived a very troubled life after her initial success, and I'm not saying that should disqualify, because most of the people in the early days who were in this business were probably troubled. And typically people who, you know, die young, you know, your Janis Joplins and your Jim Morrisons, that's an automatic entry to the Hall of Fame. Um, that gives you more street cred. Think of Nirvana, right? Oh, yeah, we got to get them right in there because all these people are such great examples to the rest of humanity and how to live a long and happy life. So sorry for the sarcasm. Okay, also on the ballot, this is interesting. We've got Dave Matthews, 
Okay. I mean, yeah, I guess I'm not a hater of Dave Matthews, but um, see, I'm just from a different generation. So some of these names I don't get now. Foreigner is probably the biggest surprise on this list because we've been talking about how Foreigner is never going to get nominated. And then all of a sudden they get nominated. So everybody who has been complaining about Foreigner not getting nominated, um, maybe someone finally heard you. I mean, their catalog is just crazy good, but they're the antithesis of what the Hall of Fame wants to put in. Okay, so... I was thinking to myself, probably not. Notice how Styx never got nominated. Notice how REO Speedwagon and the aforementioned Kansas have not been nominated. So this is kind of a surprise in a good way. They're going to put in that original band. They're not going to put in um, the lineups that came later. Certainly not Kelly Hansen, right? He's not going to be uh, in the Hall of Fame with Foreigner. So... Let's take a look at the rest of this list. Uh, Jane's Addiction. Just, okay, kind of influential and weird. <laughs> but again, the body of work, um, the impact. Yeah, they certainly uh, helped contribute to what happened in the 90s, which I'm not a fan of. This next one is very interesting. Lenny Kravitz is getting nominated. All right. Now, Lenny Kravitz has been derivative of almost every style from the 70s, right? He has stolen, like the guess who? By the way, <laughs> his version of American Woman is probably uh, more uh, well-known here in the United States now than the original amazing version by the guess who. And I prefer the guess who's version like 10 to 1 over the Lenny Kravitz version. Now, granted, Lenny Kravitz is actually rock and roll with some R&B and some soul mixed in, and he's good, but is he better than the Guess Who? All right, just let's just measure that out and see. Um, I'm thinking again that Lenny Kravitz checks off a few boxes for the Hall of Fame. So last year was Sheryl Crow. This year, it's Lenny Kravitz. They're running out of these, by the way. They're going to run out of these sort of post-era singers like Sheryl Crow. Have the Black Crows been put into the Hall of Fame? I mean, they should be put in before uh, Lenny Kravitz, but I don't know. Maybe they've already gotten in there and I uh, didn't see it, but uh, my guess is probably not. Um, Cher has been nominated. Now, Cher... <laughs> Recently, Cher has said some very harsh things. She said if they invite her, she ain't going. Because um, I'm thinking, you know, she's only set all these records over how many decades? And are they finally going to recognize her after all this time? But she basically said she wouldn't go. Uh, we'll see if she changes her mind. I do believe Cher should be in there because, I mean, come on. I mean, we're going back to like Sonny and Cher, which I don't think they're going to put Sonny Bono in with Cher, but I think that would be apropos because without Sonny, you probably don't have Cher, right? But, you know, Cher has the right political views, whereas uh, Sonny Bono did not. So uh, notice how they didn't ever nominate Sonny and Cher. So it's just Cher. We'll see if she shows up. That'll be interesting. Uh, Mary J. Blige. Look, folks, um, you can't get more blatantly R&B in that category, not rock and roll. This is a different genre. Please do not try to explain to me how Mary J. Blige is a rock and roll artist. All right. The way rock and roll is traditionally defined. Now, if you want to change the name of your hallowed institution and make it the anything goes music hall of fame then you better do it soon because every single year that you do this, you lower your credibility. Your credibility continues to get worse every single year when I see certain names on here. And we know, first of all, they want more women into the Hall of Fame. They've got to make the playing field level, right? And then on top of that, um, 
they're into deconstruction and redefining things. And this, by the way, again, goes across all areas of culture, uh, not just music, where we deconstruct the meaning of things, and then people get so fed up, they don't want to have any part in it. So a lot of people, when they see this, they go, okay, she's talented. If there's an R&B Hall of Fame, she goes in. I mean, she should have already been in, right? I think she's talented. Next is Mariah Carey. Now, I, I, I don't, again, do I think Mariah is a better candidate than Mary J. Blige? Eh, not really. Not really. Um, about the same deal here, uh, maybe somewhat more accessible for f some people that listen to music. In other words, she's a little bit more pop than R&B, um, but she's done a lot of R&B albums. She's got the biggest Christmas song in the entire galaxy, which I'm really tired of that song. Okay, you're going to put Mariah. Notice here we've got the women, Mariah Carey, Mary J. Blige, Cher. Uh, then you have Sade. <laughs> wow. So they're definitely looking for more women to put into the Hall of Fame. Now, I love Sade, by the way. I love her. She's fantastic. Great voice. Everyone's going to just say smooth operator and they're going to know, you know, it's just one of those great songs. Uh, but rock and roll, smooth jazz is now rock. And roll. It's just. And I love Sade. I do. I mean, I had a thing for Sade back in the 80s. Um, just too cool for school, man. But um, I don't, just, this is a tough one for me. Uh, probably no. If I'm going to use the same criteria um so you again how many of these you have in a row so you've got Cher, mary j blige mariah carey and sade all right and i'm not saying you can't have women oh and i forgot you have sinead o'connor so this list is riddled with women who don't belong in the hall of fame next a tribe called quest man they just keep trying on this they need to redefine Nobody is enthusiastic about this. Nobody. And if you're going to call me names, if you're going to call me the R word, that has nothing to do with this. All right? It just doesn't. Um, and, and if you're going to redefine not only a genre, but an institution, then, you know, we're all here to say not so fast. Jimi Hendrix, Sure. Um, living color, absolutely. Um, the spinners last year, the spinners got in. Okay, I agree. But a tribe called Quest, no. See, this is where um, certain people can't make the connection, uh, where they're just thinking that you don't like this person because of melanin. All right, this person has more melanin than this other person over here. So this is your this is your logic, and you are against that. No, I'm against it because it doesn't fit the genre. Okay, it doesn't fit. And I said this last year or whatever year. They keep nominating this group. They keep doing it. All right, and here's a case in point. Cool in the gang is next. Do I think Cool in the gang should be in? Yes, I do. Now, part of this is my age. But Cool and the Gang were a funk band. They, they instituted or brought in, institute was the wrong word, but they um, used a lot of different things in their music, especially in the early days. This wasn't just a lame R&B kind of thing. This was funk, rock, soul. Um, yeah, and it was just a different vibe to it. And uh, real musicians playing real music in real time and uh, some really great music as well. And by the way, some fun, uplifting music on top of it. Yeah, check. I'm, I'm in for Cool in the Gang. I don't have a problem with Cool in the Gang. Um, I'll vote them in on the first ballot. So there you go. Now, if it's just an age thing, well, you're just old, so you like Cool in the Gang and, and you don't like A Tribe Called Quest. I don't understand A Tribe Called Quest. 
All right. I don't I don't understand them. I understand cool in the gang. It's like certain people are speaking certain languages that languages that I understand and other people are just speaking in tongues. And I just don't know what they're saying. There's nobody here to interpret it for me. Maybe if I had an interpreter, then I could understand a tribe called Quest. And finally, last, but uh, I think in this case, least, Eric B. and Rakim are next. So it's a very um, interesting list. Um, I'm not going to, I mean, if I wasted a lot of time on a tribe called Quest, I'm not going to waste the same amount of time on Eric B. and Rakim. Uh, if I were to be in charge of putting folks in there, how many people get to go in? Ten are being nominated for the first time, which is interesting. Um, Ozzy, Ozzy has never been nominated. Now, let me read this paragraph. <laughs> this comes from the Hall of Fame. This remarkable list of nominees reflects the, wait for it, diverse artists and music that the rocket and music wait a minute rock and roll is a type of music well, why should we have diverse music when it's under rock and roll i mean i'm not saying you shouldn't have a little bit of diversity but how much diversity is too much well i'll tell you when it doesn't fit the genre of rock and roll then it's too much but this is right out there on their, just in the first sentence here, this remarkable list of nominees reflects the diverse artists and music that the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame honors and celebrates, says John Sykes, chairman of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Foundation. Hmm. Uh, is he a new guy? He's probably been around for a while, but maybe he was promoted. I don't know what happened. Anyway, continuing in the true spirit of rock and roll, these folks have created their own sounds and have impacted generations and influenced countless others that have followed in their footsteps. Inductees will be announced in April, and the 2024 induction ceremony will take place in Cleveland in the fall. <laughs> so that's just weird. They tell you in April, and then they don't do the ceremony until the fall. So you can sit around all summer and kind of stew over the fact that your favorite artist wasn't even nominated. As with the 2023 ceremony, the 2024 festivities will stream live on Disney Plus, my not so favorite channel, and will later air on ABC. And that date will be announced. So if you've got regular TV, you might actually get to watch this. Otherwise, you have to pay to see them put a bunch of people in who aren't rock and roll. Now, again, a weird list. Here are the ones I would put in, all right? Uh, and I don't know how many you're supposed to be able to put in, but these are the ones I would put in. So Ozzy would go in, no question about it. Peter Frampton would go in, no question about it. Um, Foreigner, of course, would go in. Uh, for those of you who think I don't like 90s music, I will allow the Dave Matthews Band in. Um, I would not put Lenny Kravitz in the Hall of Fame. I would put Cher in the Hall of Fame. And then Sade, I just can't see Sade as a rock and roll Hall of Famer. <laughs> Welcome to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Here's Chuck Berry, and next to Chuck Berry, it's Sade. Now, if Sade goes in, does this open up the entire lounge singer smooth jazz format to the Hall of Fame? Because there are some really talented cats over there. Some of the best musicians on the planet reside in that particular genre. <laughs> so, you know, open up the floodgates. Where's George Benson? Where, where the heck is George Benson? You want diversity and inclusion and equity. One of the greatest guitar players of all time. He's not in the Hall of Fame, is he? I mean, I'm I'm just stumped. I'm perplexed. I'm annoyed. But that's what I do here. Um, I hope you have a great Super Bowl Sunday. I may do some commentary about the Super Bowl this year as far as the music and the um, 
omniscience of uh, Taylor Swift, which is getting very irritating. Here's Jerome Mazza, uh, Outlaw Son. It's a really good album for old geezers like me and maybe for you. Uh, if not, um, you don't have to worry about it because you can stream it. And uh, I'm sure there are CD copies out there. Um, but Jerome was nice enough to send me this a long time ago. And I'm just a big fan. So again, check out Jerome Mazza. Nice guy too. Really top-notch individual. And um, it's good when you meet some of these people and you find out that they're real. Uh, I like real people and um, not pretentious and super talented. Um, like the early days of rock and roll where not everyone was aloof and full of themselves and they catered toward the fans and they didn't get annoyed uh, when the fans were being fans. So good for Jerome Mazza for being that guy. And uh, again, thanks for watching. Continue to pray for peace in the Middle East and around the world and Patreon and also YouTube memberships if you'd like to support this channel. God bless you, and I will see you soon.